Jamai, welcome. Today I'm going to be exploring uh, mesh networking. Now, originally I wanted to make a project, then make a tutorial for the project, but then I realized the project I want to make is, is too big for that. So it sort of makes sense to make a series of diary entries and then um, to, you know, keep a record of, 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 of the project as it, as it evolves and develops. Now, and then also you'll give the opportunity for anyone who's a bit more technically capable than me to, to join in, which would be much appreciated because um, I feel like I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Anyway, I'm going to start it. So the project's called uh, Bitcoin Mesh. So as usual, I've set up um, a GitHub for Bitcoin Mesh. So the, the, the basic concept is a cheap to join mesh network to transmit and receive Bitcoin transactions. Um, uh, we're going to be utilizing our ESP32, which we've used in the other projects, because these little devices can be used for mesh networking. Um, uh, why, you know, other benefits to them is that obviously incredibly low cost. Uh, they support, support Wi-Fi and BLE. They have a 200 meter range. So as long as you get one of these bad boys within 200 meters of another one, they can start talking to each other. And then you can set them up and to have a, a 10 megabyte um, data transfer rate. So there have been people who've experimented with mesh networking using something like Gotenna, uh, but the, the bandwidth is very limiting and um, the cost uh, is, is expensive. The Gotenna's cost quite a lot and they're, they're pretty close. Whereas these things are incredibly easy. You can audit them and they're cheap. And um, with them being cheap, you can have more of them, which means you end up with a, a close, closer knit mesh network, which is, is better for stability. Now my concept is with my the mesh network is to have kind of contact points and that would be like your Bitcoin full node which is connected to the mesh or um, you know, a Blockstream satellite dish thing which is connected to the, connected to the mesh and they would be um, all collectively broadcasting Bitcoin transaction data into the mesh. Um, there would also be a, a sort of unicast layer which people could send a transaction through uh, through the network, either from you know one node to another, or uh, from a node um, to to utilize their satellite or a, or a Bitcoin full node. So the idea being, you have um, a, a network which um, you could use just sort of solely on its own to be able to send transaction data, or um, you can use the internet, or you can use you know the satellite, or you could use whatever else, what other, um, what uh, any other. Uh, um, sort of contact point to, to the Bitcoin network you could think of, you know, you're sending transactions through radio, whatever. Um, but you could connect them all into this Bitcoin mesh network. Uh, so yeah, that unicast layer, in order to stop spam, you would have to have like some sort of scalable fee system, I guess. So, you, you know, if you're going to send a transaction through the network to the Blockstream satellite, which is, you know, owned by a guy who lives up the road, then he could re receive a small fee for providing that service. Um, and uh, uh, that would also prevent you from spamming spamming the, the network. Um, if you were just sending it from one node to another, then that fee could just be randomly dropped on one of the one of the providers of a, a contact point uh, to the Bitcoin network, the full node or the satellite or whatever. Um, so so yeah, so so it should be exciting, should be fun. Um, uh, Hopefully, you know, this, this will develop into something meaningful and useful for somebody. Even if it doesn't, we're exploring mesh networks and mesh networks are cool. Um, it's not until, it's a bit like 3D printing, it's not until you start experimenting with this technology you realise what all the hype's about. Because uh, when you get one of these little, bad, little guys here and then you flash them with, you know, the software, you get it within 200 metre range of the rest of these little nodes and it automatically connects. Um, they, they can allocate, you know, uh, what what type of node it is? If, it, if you need to have different types of nodes, um, uh, and similarly, if you like, to, if I took out that node there or that node there, then the, the whole system would just self heal and then root around the nodes which have been taken out. Um, so it's a self healing, extremely anti fragile, strong network, which is what we want in Bitcoin, really. Um, so what have I got here? So, yeah, as always, you know they're really cheap. These ESP thirty twos, you can pick them up for a couple of quid, four quid. Uh, it's like five, six dollars. Um, you can also, if I got the other camera set up, yes, I have. Um, if you haven't seen, if you're planning on make, you know, experimenting with these things, I strongly recommend you go back and work on some of the other projects which um, I, I've worked on in the past. Um, uh, there was one project where we um, 
we got just the microcontroller itself and then we embedded it in a computer keyboard so it was drawing power from the computer keyboard just from the usb cable because it draws such a minimal amount of power um, and then that created like an access point oh that created like an access point these things are like a dollar or two dollars uh, and these have the you know the the little aerial things so that they're able to transmit with 200 meters you know between each other but they're so cheap you could embed them in you know the bulbs in a in a traffic uh, um, street light system uh, so then they could just have a constant source of, of power now the um these ones we use this special little module here to be able to sort of flash them with the software that just pops in there and then we you know plug that into the computer flash the software on and then as long as it's got power it's going to connect to the rest of the network um uh, for this project we'll probably be using these little dev kit things but the idea being that obviously you could then use this to for cost saving and then you know installing you know, if you're smaller you can it's easy to install into things um now the real motivation behind the, the, the sort of base concept behind this project uh, i live in this small village here in the, the beautiful south coast uh, uh the wales the south coast of wales uh the the village of mumbles it's gorgeous if you're ever you know nearby then you know you should definitely check it out um it's not too big uh so if we look here we went on our little um uh, I don't know how to get the, the grid on here. It's quite annoying, but the the yeah we can see this is a 200 meter in the key here. So to so say the actual village itself is sort of this big, so it's about you know a kilometer squared I'd say. Um, so a kilometer by a kilometer in size. Um, so if we're using the minimum amount of ESP32s to be able to make a mesh network and they've got perfect line of sight with each other then they only need to be 200 meters apart. So we could just get away with using five times five, which is 25 ESP32s. Um, I have a, uh, um, I bought a, a whole bunch of ESP32s cheap and I've actually got 50 of them. So I've got 50 of them for this project. So I'm gonna have a 100 meter uh, range between them just to make sure they can talk to one, to one another. So that's 50 ESP32s. So 50, um, uh, ESP32s, which could be these sorts of ESP32s, just these these little microcontrollers here, which you can get down to like a dollar fifty. Um, uh, so that's like you know seventy five dollars or whatever. Uh, seventy five dollars to blanket the whole of a village in uh, Bitcoin transaction data, and then also provide a free service anyone can connect to and send transaction data through. So I'm pretty excited about this project. It should be pretty cool. Um, I hope it is, and maybe I've gone nuts and it's a complete waste of time, but I'm still learning about mesh networking and that's cool and cool on its own. So uh, Expressif, they've uh, last December, these are the people who make the SP32, last December, because um, there's more and more interest in people building, they want to build mesh networks, and there have been a few libraries which came out within the sort of Arduino community, but none of them were stable enough, I'd say. Um, Expressif then came out and produced a uh, development framework for developing uh, mesh mesh uh, networks. Um, this also, you know, like any sort of open source project, it has their commercial arm, which is they, they do sort of lighting solutions and things, um, but but we're obviously focusing on the, the open source bit. Um, so, so yeah, it's, here's some stats here on the, the type of mesh network you can make. Um, uh, and then if we go to their GitHub, uh, this is the, the mesh development uh, framework for, for being able to, to, to you know, software to be able to make uh, a, a mesh network using their software um, now this is kind of a little bit more complicated than just using the Arduino IDE or the platform IO IDE because uh, we're using expressive systems um, uh, uh, IDF or, or MDF uh, mesh development framework um, they've got some really um, incredible documentation on how to kind of get this set up um, I put all the links in the description obviously uh, so the first thing you'll need to do is set up the tool chain. Um, so a tool chain is a list of kind of little programs which will help the mesh development framework program run. Um, so there's, there's, there's you know, really straightforward instructions on how to do that, how to install that for your uh, operating system. And then once you've installed the, um, the tool chain, you can go ahead and download i would show you how to do this but i've already done it on my computer so um you can go ahead and then install the esp mdf um, and then once you've done that if we open up terminal once you've done that then you need to set a path so yeah so once you've done that um 
in your home directory, my home directory, I've got my ESP um, folder here. Ignore this one. That's just me being silly. Um, and then when I double click on there, I've got a ESP MDF folder and double click on there. And this is, we you know, where the examples are, which we're going to work on to be able to try and fulfill my dream of having the uh, mesh network broadcast Bitcoin transaction data. Um, so we need to tell terminal uh, where, so this is like mostly a kind of GUI environment. We need to tell terminal where the um, uh, MDF path is for the, for the, so this ESP, ESP MDF here. Um, so we do that. And then uh, we need to, do we need to do this bit? Yes. No. No, I don't think we do. I think I can just CD into it. Right, so I'll CD into... I don't know why I can't follow instructions. Um, uh, so th th there are some very simple uh, examples which you, we could use first, but um, uh, I've already experimented with those and I want to kind of like move move this project along a little bit faster. So this, this is just a direct extract as to where I've got to so far, really. Um, so yeah, we're going to do this sort of demo example here and Wi-Fi and pop them in there. Now would this work? So once I've CD'd into there, make menu config, is that going to say no? Oh, there we are. Cool. Um, so within this folder here, there's a uh, make menu config. There's a there's a file. Where is it? Make menu config. Make menu config. Oh, I must be using like the MDF thing. Well, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, so we're able to run this setup file here. So we're going to ignore uh, a lot of the parameters here. We're just going to go to the example configuration here. Now, this is where you put in your... Um, so this example, okay, uh, it connects to my Wi-Fi. So one of the... So I have my ESP32s. Maybe I'm better sort of switching to um, the camera. I have my ESP32s here. Okay, let's say this one... Uh, yeah, and then I have my, my home network here where I've got my, my Blockstream satellite, for example. So I set up a, a server here, a TCP server, delivering uh, data. And then the mesh network nominates a master node to speak to the, um, the network. Uh, it then receives the data from the network and then broadcasts it out then to all the other nodes on the network. Okay. Um, the cool thing is, is if I have, I can have some redundancy, I can have, you know, a couple of, of you know, these uh, nodes close to my Wi-Fi. And then if one of them gets taken out, it's all encrypted as well, so it's secure. If one of them gets taken out, the other nodes will automatically nominate this node to, um, uh, to connect to this Wi-Fi here and then start broadcasting the data out. So this is, this is the experiment which we're, we're going to be working with today. Okay. Um, right, so I'm going to put in my uh, Wi-Fi details. So it's going to blur out now. Um, password. Um, and then you've got some other perimeters, like you've got, um, so you've got the mesh ID, which is the, um, just the ID of the mesh network we're going to be making. And then you've got a password for that mesh network. Um, in this example, we're just going to turn the LED on the SP32 on and off um, uh, through our mesh network. Um, and then we've got uh, the server IP address. So we need to set up a TCP server on our computer. Um, and then we've got a server port. So let's set up the TCP um, server on our computer. Uh, I'm not sure what you would use for Windows. I think the solution I'm going to use is available on Windows. I'm not sure. So focus at app images. So Packet Sender by Linux. Should we, um, should we get the web page up for that? Uh, ooh. Linux Packet Sender. 
let's have a look. Can you get this for anything else? Or just Linux? Um, oh yeah, you can get it for Windows. Okay, yeah, so just use packet sender and get it for Windows and Mac as well. I can recommend this, unless you're intent on using a different, you know, TCP server thing. And this is just for testing, so um, uh, yeah, this is just so we can test our mesh network. Um, so, so let me open up packet sender. Um, and then, you know, we have our TCP port here, um, which is 4477. Four, four, triple seven, and then we have um, we need our IP address. So, um, so confused. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, in Windows is IP config in Linux is if config. Um, so yeah, one one six is still the same. Um, why have I closed that? So one one six. Yep. So that's already. So that should that should be fine. Okay. Let's um, let's save it. I guess. Okay. Exit, and then we can exit. Exit. There we are. So we've saved our settings, and then we've got our packet sender software sat here now. It's running a very simple TCP server, and it's just listening to see if anyone's connecting to that TCP server. Um, now, once we've done that. Um, how's that? Uh, we need to um, actually send, you know, upload the upload the software onto our ESP32. So I'm going to plug that in. Um, now, in the example bit of code here. This gives you the commands to be able to upload the software, but we want to be able to like monitor then through the, the USB what the SP32 is doing. Yeah. Um, so if we go to, because there's a specific readme just for this example, if we go to examples, functional demo, and then M Wi Fi, um, here we go. That's what we want there. See? Yeah. Um, is our ESP32 plugged into that USB port? Uh, I'm really goofy. I don't know how else to check this apart from just opening up Arduino and check. I'm sure there's some command line thing. <laughs> Come on, Arduino, open up. Right, and then tools. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's the right port. Cool. Um, so copy that. And then paste that in terminal. Okay, cool. So it's compiling our program with our um, custom perimeters we've just set. Now, I wonder if I can put that there and then Bear with me, I'm just going to get it so we can kind of see both screens at the same time. I'm being a goofball. There we go. Let's just going to take a little while to compile. We compile, hopefully it will. We've got a little red light, so that's kind of promising. Oops. Well, it's just doing the little dotty thing it does. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I gotta press the little uploady button on the SP32. So it raises it. Well, I was on there. Connecting. It's uploading it. Okay, cool. Loads of stuff's happening. <laughs> it's connecting to the Wi Fi, I think. Ooh. Okay, so I think it's just trying to find other nodes to see if there's a mesh to join. Oh, cool, look at that. Oh, look at that packet sender through it. Wow, brilliant. So um, uh, the packet sender software, this software here just opened up a, um, a 
can't remember what it's called. It opened up a persistent TCP window, which is this thing here. So basically my ESP32 is just saying, I'm here, and these are my settings. I'm here, and these are my settings. I'm here, these are my settings. So I'm gonna send some information now back to it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change uh, this sort of uh, number on status here from zero to one. So that, so we set um, pin two, which is the little blue LED um, on there. That's the pin number of uh, that little LED. We set that in the, um, in the settings for um, for this for this project in the configuration file we just did. Um, so at the moment it's sending back, yeah, I've got a zero, which means it's off. So if I now um, put a one in there and I click on send, boom, see, now we get a little blue light. That's pretty cool, isn't it? See, that's pretty cool that I can turn that little blue light on and off. It's fairly useless. <laughs> um, but it's doing that over Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. I turn him off again. Nice. Cool. Um, uh, so that's pretty funky, but uh, what's really funky is then when we connect these these bad boys together. So as I said, I, I bought a whole load of these ESP32s, so I'm just going to get another one. Let's get another two, shall we? And then hopefully this will work. Ooh. Unplug him. He no longer needs to be plugged in. Plug him in. And then we, we shall plug this guy in, but just using a battery. Oh, I see he's flicking fiddly. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah, the only thing which is annoying about the, this particular type of SP32 is the, the little, the ground and the uh, five volt pin aren't together. So we have to use little jumper wires, which is a bit, bit of a pain, but there we are. Um, where's ground? There's ground. So ground, hopefully this battery's got charge. And then power, there we are. Got a light. So he's now, this uh, node is now connected to the network. We just need to flash the software on, on your node. Um, so yeah, I think it's as simple as that. We just flash it with the exact same software onto our other node. Oh, press the little button. Okay, is it loading? Uh, there we are um, and this one's so if we open this up so we can kind of see what's going on status zero da -da 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 -da. layer two can't see let me let me open this up a bit so what have we got here has he found the other node that's the question isn't it layer two Ah, oh yeah, look, node number two, cool. So they're now can, you know, talk to each other. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's flash another one, shall we? Um, uh, plug this guy in. I don't want to get these muddled up. Right. That one's a five volt. Okay, so now these two guys are talking with each other. And then we've got our third guy here, which we're going to plug in and we're going to flash with the software as well. Um, here we are. So that's flashing with the software as well. That's the little button. OK, 
Okay. So hopefully that little node number thing we saw will now say three, and that'll mean that all three of them are, are chatting with each other. Node number zero, that's not so good. <laughs> oh, which you can't see actually because this thing's in the way. Uh, they're my three addresses, and then here's my, um, this is where I was, because you couldn't actually see, this is where I was pasting the, the data. So if I copy that and then paste that in there and click send there we are one of the lights turned off did you see that and then if I do the same with this one oh zero there we are turn that one off cool um, and if I do the same with that one so this is um, specifically targeting uh, a specific ESP32. So we've got a little mesh network here where they're all communicating with each other. Okay, um, and then when the master node uh, receives the, the the address, the data I'm sending it, um, which is this data, right? When it receives that data, it uses that addre address there to locate the ESP32, and then sends a one, so it sends an on to turn the little light on. Yeah. So if we do that again, well that one, sorry. So we end up turning that little light on, don't we? Yeah. Um, so that's a kind of unicast, um, uh, yeah, that's a unicast um, bit of data. Now we're going to try broadcast. Now I think if I change all of those to zero, like that, okay, change all of those to zero, and then if I paste that in there, Um, right, so where are we? Da, 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 FFF, here we go. So if I change that, sorry, not to zero, if I change to FFF, uh, packet sender, and goodness me, terminal. So I need terminal open, packet sender open, and text editor open, here we go. Um, so if I change that to FFF, and press send. Yeah, they all could turn on. That's pretty cool, isn't it? If I change that to zero, they all turn off. There we are. So that's a broadcast bit of data, isn't it? Because I'm broadcasting out to the whole network, and then all of these ESP32s are getting a one, yeah, uh, which is turning the little LED on. Oh, and press. Boom. There we are. Um, whereas if I just do unicast yeah oh I didn't, I didn't press send <laughs> then one of them turns off that's pretty cool so here we are we have our uh, fully functional our fully functional mesh network uh, the next tests will be on how what sort of range um, uh, I can get on these little bad boys um, so I'll have to go somewhere, maybe the beach or something. I'll see if I can get some video of the kind of range. Um, uh, so we have our, you know, our broadcast and our unicast, and then we're able to send data from Wi-Fi. Um, so we're a few steps towards my dream of being able to um, cover my little local village in Bitcoin transaction data. So thanks for watching. Um, if you want to get involved in the project and you think you can contribute, then please do because, you know, this is above my technical ability. Um, uh, and then also, you know, buy some of these little tiny cheap devices and start experimenting. They're so cheap uh, and they're a lot of fun and they're very rewarding as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.